So I'm going to read today from verse 11, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 11, and here it is. So they appointed taskmasters over them to afflict them with hard labor, and they built for Pharaoh storage cities, Pithom and Ramses. So as we said, the purpose of this forced labor was to diminish the Hebrews. And as a side benefit, this was like very cheap labor, you know. So this was an economic bonus for Egypt. Again, this was something kind of short, just short of slavery, but it was compulsory unpaid labor. They were forced to work. And we can rightly call this oppression because the intention, the stated intention, we read it in the, in the Bible, the stated intention is to reduce the Hebrew people. The stated intention is to kill, uh, to, to have them work, and then to take the fruits of their labor. We're stealing that from them because they're being forced. It's, it's, there's not, they're not compensated. So we're going to take that. So there's stealing going on. And then the other piece here was we're going to reduce this people. We're going to use them up and discard them. We're going to throw them away. And so that's what is in the mind of Pharaoh. And that's what's in the mind of his advisors and his administration and the, the government across Egypt. This is their plan. And in fact, this is a genocidal plan. And we'll say more about this when we get to the Ten Commandments up in chapter 20, chapter 20, verse 13. We'll talk about that commandment here, how that applies here. But often, you know, there's a lot of different ways to kill a people. And so we technically kind of want to narrow it down, but we'll say more, we'll save it, and we'll, we'll come back to that when we get to that spot. But let's keep this in mind. Pharaoh's goal was to kill Hebrews. That's just, that's kind of a baseline piece here. So the storage cities of Pithom and Ramses were built, and the exact identity of these locations remains a question of debate. The scholars are still debating uh, which ones they think they are. They think there's certain spots up in the Nile Delta there. And we probably do know roughly where those spots are, but the, the details are under debate. We understand that the pyramids have been built perhaps long before this. And, you know, when the Hebrews first arrived there, perhaps even those pyramids were standing. Yeah, I know I've got some pyramids in the background here, but that we don't say, we're not saying that the Pharaoh forced the Hebrews to build the pyramids. Now, there's an interesting similarity here in the Hebrew that might be uh, definitely worth looking at. So they're building, they're taking mortar and bricks, and they're building storage cities for Pharaoh. And the Hebrew word for that is Mishkinot. Now, what's interesting is that in the first part of Exodus, they're building Mishkinot, storage cities for Pharaoh, who's trying to, who's killing them. And in the last part of the book, they're building Mishkin, a tabernacle. That's the Hebrew word for tabernacle. They're building a Mishkin, a tabernacle to worship God. So there's a very interesting similarity between those two words in the Hebrew and there's this contrast where in the beginning they're under forced labor to this genocidal leader who's killing them. And at the end of the book, they're making Michigan. They're making tabernacle for the God of heaven who has given them liberty. So interesting, uh, very interesting kind of transition that happens as we go through the book. Well, we're right at the front of the book now, but there's great stuff coming up. And you know, that kind of comes back to you and I. Uh, we're engaged in, you know, all the different toils of our life, but a lot of us, a lot of people have been out making bricks, making bricks for Pharaoh, you know, making, making money and doing things for corporations that really would just as soon kill us, where we could be serving instead the God of heaven, the God who wants to give us liberty and freedom, the God who wants to bring us up and help us to be all that he designed us to be. So we want to uh, leave the world and depart and come to where God would have us to be. So there's definitely a lot of interesting parallels here we're going to be seeing as we look through this interesting, fascinating book of Exodus. See you tomorrow morning.